In this video, I'll be showing you guys resources and strategies I took to pass all the GED tests first try within 52 days. But before we get into that, I would like to tell you guys some background. But before we get into that, I want you guys all to subscribe and like the video so I keep posting these type of videos, especially since I am continuing my exciting journey, journey to continue my education. So now that you have subscribed and liked the video, I'll be telling you guys some backstory. I officially dropped out in the ninth grade between the ages of 14 and 15 years old. I am now 18, almost 19, literally two months away from turning 19 years old. And between those four to five years, I had no educational classes, no, I didn't go back to school, so I had literally no brain activity. But I decided to get my GED, take my life to the next level, and take my education to the next level. So in order to take my life to the next level, I had to get my GED. I did that, and guess what? I have applied to college, and I have been accepted to college. And I plan on going to college for a vet tech degree in AA as a vet tech. So that sounds, and I think will be a lot of fun, because I do enjoy working with animals. And from there, I plan on getting a bachelor's in physics. And my dream job is to work at SpaceX, working for Elon Musk. I know, there's some big goals for a GED graduate. Now the first test I took was the RLA test, the English test, the reasoning through language arts test. I got a score of 163, and I took the test 80921. I spent around two weeks prior studying for about an hour a day. I used a website called Khan Academy which was provided for free for me, but I do believe it does cost month, a, monthly, a monthly fee subscription, but it is very useful and I feel like if I could have studied, if I would have studied a bit more, I could have gotten co college credit, but that's okay, at least I passed, that's all I really wanted to do. The, que the, the test was about 50, 55 questions, multiple choice, on vocab and reading comprehension. Now the written response, I got a score of three out of six, which isn't very good. And it went something like this. Passage one, there was a passage one, passage two, argument one, argument two. Argument one was that the city wanted to put a greener mode of transportation. Now argument two or passage two, was saying how we should use the money, the city was saying how we should use the money instead of the greener mode of transportation in building a new mall, something like that. And you had to choose which argument was better, has more facts, had more um, anecdotal evidence, and you would use that and then build your argument. Now the biggest tip I could give you is that if you pass the RLA test, at least a 155 out of 200, I would tell you, go take the science test, go take the social studies test. And I'll tell you why in a minute, but I don't want you guys to waste your time too early on studying if you could pass it when you know you can. So if you get at least a 155 on the RLA test, go take the social studies test, go take the science test. Now the second test I took was the social studies test. I got a score of 159 and I took it 81421. I really spent no time studying history. You don't need to know dates, okay? You don't need to memorize specific battles or the Civil War, anything like that. You don't need to know that on the test. The test was about 45 questions. It was a little bit less, like 42 to be exact. And I would say know a little bit about government, know the three branches of government, like the, the judicial, the legislative and the executive and what each of those things do and how they correlate and the social studies test just really had a lot of text quotes and passages on history so you just had to read a passage a short a short summary of let's say women women's rights susan b anthony or slavery of frederick Douglass, and they would pull out a sentence or two and say what is this what does this sentence from passage one paragraph two mean? And you, there will be multiple choice and you just give your best answer. So I would definitely say read. And if you, the, again, the biggest tip, if you pass the RLA, you will pass the social studies test. 
and that includes the science test. Now the third test I took was the science test. I got a score of 156 and I took it 822-21. It was definitely the shortest test and it was the second easiest test for me. And some tips I would give you, know some basic math, know how to find the mean and the average or and the mode. Definitely know how to do that. Um, I would, some tips, some more tips I could give you would be know what the food chain is and how it works, right? Some photosynthesis and some basic math. Now I really spent no time studying for this test at all. Same with the social studies. And really, if you pass the English test and you're worried about the science or history, just take them. If you got a 155 or higher, just take it and you will pass. That's my best recommendation. Now the last and final test, the fourth test, was the math test. I got a score of 156 and I took the test 929-21. Now I did spend about a month studying about 29 days, 30 days straight. I would, I would study for about two hours a day. I knew how to put in the time because math for me, I'm not a math person. Numbers do not come easily to me. So I definitely knew how to put in some work. And I saved the math test for last on purpose because I knew that would be the most difficult one for me. I did pass first try though, so that was, I was definitely happy about that. The, ta the test was about 50, 55 questions long and there were very little geometry questions. I kid you not, on the official test, there were two geometry questions. Find the volume of a sphere, find the volume of a quadrilateral. And they do give you a sheet of the volumes and the a cheat sheet. So you just look up how to find, the, what is the equation for finding the volume of a sphere and quadrilateral, boom, you get the answers. And so I would say, don't spend your time too much on geometry, which is what I did. I thought I would need a lot of time spending on ge geometry since I, I only went up to the ninth grade, I didn't take geometry. So I thought I needed a lot of practice in that. But really, the, really the practice that you should do is basic math. The first part of the math test, which is only like 10 questions, are basic math skills, addition, subtraction, uh, multiplying with decimals, what is undefined, a number, any number over zero, right? Those like basic math, uh, pre-algebra skills. And really, the there were a lot of world, world uh, excuse me, word problems, algebraic word problems. I would say work on that. No um, mean, the average, right? You find the average by adding the total numbers of the total numbers and numbers they give you, and you divide them by the by the numbers, how many numbers there are. So if, let's say you have 10, 10, 10, you add 10 plus 10 plus 10, which is 30 divided by three, which is the total of how many numbers there are, that gives you three. That would be your mean. Know how to find your median, right? Know how to find your mode. Mode is the most common number in a set of in a list, what is the common number that pops up the most in that list, right? So you need to tell, you need to know basic math like that. Um, finding percentage increase and decrease, I would say definitely know how to do. And the way I studied, I studied by myself. I didn't use any website or or sort of book. I what I did it was for free. I think this will be very helpful for you, very helpful for you if you're taking the math test and you really struggle with math. The there's a YouTube channel called GED Micro Learning. I'll probably put that on the screen somewhere, GED Micro Learning. And another YouTube channel called David Cohen. They, they cover the, the math test, really all subjects, but majority of the math test. And they literally show you videos of what you, what to expect on the test, on the math test. And they give you the answer after they, they review the questions. So that's very helpful if you don't know. Oh, Another tip would be um, quadrilaterals. Know how to do quadrilaterals. Um, and yeah, so those two YouTube channels will help you guys tremendously. GD Microlearning and David Cohen. Big shout out to them, they helped me a lot. That's how I self-studied. I used their, their YouTube videos and it helped me tremendously, okay? 
Now, I almost forgot to put this in the video, but please know how to read, identify, and plot on different types of graphs, like line graphs and bar graphs. You will need to know that, and also slopes. How to find slope. There are multiple questions about that. Now, since the majority of the test is um, algebraic word problems, you will need to know how to read a math problem and make an equation out of that to get your answer. So get used to that, and the biggest two resources for free I can give you is GD Microlearning, on the screen again, and David Cohen. Now I really hope this video was helpful for many of you guys out there. And if it was, please drop a like and subscribe. I will be covering my journey to get a AA degree as a vet tech, and then continuing my journey on getting a bachelor's in physics, which will be a lot of fun, and I'm sure you guys will be interested in that. And if you are struggling still with getting your GED, even after these tips, just keep persisting forward, do not stop. It is 100% worth it. Getting your high school equivalency. It is 100% worth it, do not give up. Now I wish you the best of luck on your success on getting your GED. Subscribe.